Continuing our teardown of the lower section of the PMD 740, let's detach this CPU board. So we have one, two, three, four, five holes for screws. I've only got two of them in just to make this video slightly shorter for me to film. As mentioned earlier, this corner, uh, we've got a common ground connector going to this piece of shielding that's separating the mixer and record amplifier. With those screws detached and this piece of shielding will come away. You can see we've got two cables running down from this Q volume PCB. This larger brown bunch is going in the top left corner. Narrower grey bunch terminates in this plug here. And we've only got one plug that's going over to the cord playback amp over here. And it's running from over here by the headphone outputs. So we can just pull that out and then this board comes away, giving us access to any soldering or whatever that we might need to do. Next, let's unplug this mixer amp volume PCB. Start on this uh, bottom left corner and move our way around. So this cable, tied them all together, but it's terminating. I think it's terminating on this one, either here or this board below. We'll confirm that as we go along. Group of three cables here. This plug here, brown cable is coming underneath and uh, that's running, running down towards the headphone sockets there. Third from the bottom, it seems to be going around the corner up to between this capacitor and this heat sink. Second from the bottom, that's definitely terminating in a yellow soldered in header on this uh, tape out by an outboard here. This one, it's going underneath to the record amplifier board somewhere. Right, moving along here, what's this board called? XLR jack PCB, so underneath a cable tie here and uh, tugged into a socket up just above the channel 6 fader. Lift up that cable tie. Let that cable dangle over the back. Jack PCB below that, there's some sort of soldered in connector there and that's going to plug here. Got a cable running underneath on this record playback amp and it's going through a couple of cable ties here. One, two, there's a third one in the middle here. So that's running all the way down here to a socket and beside channel three. Then Along here, we've got four plug-in sockets. Um, each of them, you know, corresponding to channels one, two, three, four, are terminating on our. It seems to be labelled as the insert jack. So that's how that's connecting to the mixer board. So we'll unplug all four of those. They do look like quite thick cables, unless I'm noting otherwise. But I am trying to put my pressure onto the plastic rather than onto the wires themselves where I can. Then we've got a little narrow cable coming from um, the record amplifier board to a two pin header there. And then these seem to be the connectors for the XLR sockets. Right, is that everything? It is. The mixer board is now separate. Next, let's remove the Q volume PCB. It's one, two, three, four, five, six screws there. Get this out of the way, and then we're going to have a clearer picture of where all these cables that were attaching to the mixer went. Now, we can see a little bit more clearly now that two cables, one just below this Toshiba chip, and this one here on the edge, those were both going to the mixer board. Four pin and eight pin headers at the end of those. You can see the longer the, of these two cables behind this capacitor here was going into this socket, and then this one in the bottom left is going into the record playback circuit board as well. And that leaves us with two cables still attached. We're passing under a cable tie here and terminating on the record playback circuit here. There's a group of three, so it's the leftmost and bottom of those three. I beg your pardon, there's a third one as well. It's the topmost of these three here is going to the socket in the upper right of this record playback board, just below this mounting post. And so that board is now separate. 
it allows us to see that these four coming from this board, which is labelled as the out input jack, we're connecting to the mixer board. And uh, the various lengths and pin numbers will help you to reassemble that correctly. Now the only remaining plug has been disconnected is this longest one coming from this board over to the record playback amp. Imagining we needed to solder something here, maybe we had a bad socket or something, then we've got one, two, three screws there to remove. And also four screws along the back here between the RCA sockets. Now that will lift out. Now we can remove this pair of boards. One, two, three screws. Fourth one there. And on this upper layer we've got one screw there. Eight screws here and right one there before we can take these out and access the screws below it. With those screws removed, it will come out like that. There's a shared connector there so that's not going to come away from this board altogether. Here's what those screws look like by the way. They're narrow ferrule black. Again it's the larger screwdriver that I'm using to remove them. I can pardon one, two, three, four, five screws. Again wide ferrule, short Grass screws there. Now uh, this will lift away and get under there for any soldering that we might need to do. And in fact, this back plate comes off now. Um, it's slotting into recesses on the plastic case there. Finally, we have the record playback board. We could have removed this earlier with, once the mixer was off and all the cables were disconnected. I just thought I would remove these smaller boards around the sides so it was easier to see what cable goes where. The screws are located two here, one here. I've written, that's meant to say C slash T, short for cable type, because there's a little cable tidy here that's holding these two cables. C slash T up here for this one, another cable tie. And there's three screws on that row all together, and then there's three across the middle here. With those screws removed, tip it from the back to allow these headphone sockets to come out. And that is the unit now completely disassembled.